a lot of people, I think, overthink it. They, they get into almost shutdown mode when they start hearing internet marketing and digital digital ads and, and traffic and, and search engines and all that kind of stuff. So I want to simplify it. It's really understanding that traffic is, is part of it. Sure. And that, that's its own conversation. But what happens after they click? Like what happens? Where do you take them once you get that visitor to your website? Right. Or if they open up an email or they saw your social media post or they read your blog post, they watched a video. What happens after that is where a lot of people are, are dropping the ball. They, they don't understand that. OK, what I do next matters a whole lot. And there's not a lot of thought that goes into that post click event. So if I hit your website, where are you going to take me next? Like what happens if I click on that button or that link? And that's really all it is, is strategically placing buttons and links into your content that are going to take people to that next step. And that next step is typically an engagement tool, meaning something that's going to get that consumer to interact and give you some information about who they are and what they're looking for. And it can't just be a loan application. Right. It can't just be a contact form. Yeah. It can't just be, give me your name, email, phone number, tell me where you live, you know, answer a whole bunch of questions and, and give me information that you're not comfortable with. Because if you ask the wrong questions too soon in the process, you're going to scare people off. If you call the button a loan application and it says apply now, I've never spoken with you before. I just saw you on social media or even if I've seen you a few times now. So there's a little bit of trust. Right. That's still not a slam dunk. I'm still not just going to apply for a mortgage. That's a pretty big ask. So what we're trying to do is make it a little bit easier for people. Remove the friction. Understand that a loan application is not the first step in the process. The first step is typically a conversation, them getting to know you, you building rapport, all these wonderful things that happen at an early stage of the relationship that then you can send them back to your website to do the loan application. But that's usually like a step two. Gotcha. So the buttons and links, you can put them anywhere. That, that's the easy part. It's literally a copy and a paste. Buttons and links can be added to websites, blog posts. Uh, you can put a link beneath a video and say, hey, click the, click the link below. Find out if you're qualified. Find out how much home you could afford. Simple things like that go a long way. And then understanding, well, where do I take them? You're taking them to a survey. You're taking them to an engagement form the same way lending tree does it same way quicken loans is doing it same way uh, all these big companies zillow with their long form realtor.com they've all figured out that there's a way to ask for information that doesn't right. scare people off and they put that all over everything so if you look at a a page on zillow like in their blog content on one of their listings on anything on one of these big sites you're typically going to find they're they're layered with buttons and links that are pulling you back into what's called their long form. So they're just pulling you into a questionnaire strategically and they're loading that questionnaire up on all of their content. So, so is this taking this taking them away from the site or is it? it, it it's an extension of their website, but okay. it's taking you off of the page that in, in a way, it, it's the content piece, it's the calculator, it's the gotcha. blog post, it's the article that got me interested, that educated me a little right. bit. And the next step is, hey, are you interested in finding out if you're eligible or do you want to see how much home you can afford or do you want to calculate your savings? Click here to find out how much lower your mortgage payment could be. And then they pull me into a series of questions that are applicable to that scenario. Like, OK, so what's your current mortgage payment? Okay, okay what kind of house is it? Yeah. They'll ask about typically there's a kind of a sweet spot between right. 12 and 20 questions. So there's actually a lot of questions. But the way they ask those questions make all the difference. It's not one long form with 25 fill in the blanks. There's a strategy in terms of how they how they present those questions. Right. The, the format of those questions, the way they do it is, is all kind of specialized to make sure that people are kind of gamified, yeah. meaning it's kind of fun, right? So right. as I'm answering questions, there's there's a little bit of a feedback loop. There's some interaction. The next next question kind of zips onto the page. The next one just drops out. There's a level of, of interaction that's happening that kind of keeps me pulled into the process. And at the end is where they're asking for contact information. That's once you've earned it, once I've spent maybe a minute or two answering the easy questions, then at the end of the process, you can ask for contact information. It's just the okay, tried cool. and true formula. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of psychology into uh, built into it that right. that that kind of leads leads people to to complete the process, which is critical. Right. We want to get people to start answering these questions. And at the end of that funnel, we're looking to get their name, email, phone number. And that's that's the magic information we want. But we got to ask for that in a real uh, strategic kind of way. We can't just open up the page and say, okay, give me your contact info. Right. Right. Too many people are doing it that way and not understanding why is my conversion rate so low? Why is it that I drive a thousand people to my page or my site and I get nothing out of it? You know, I get two or three leads and they're junk, you know, right. 
these big companies have done a lot of testing. They figured this stuff out. You know, Zill uh, Zillow was one of our first big clients that we helped build their mortgage marketplace. Um, you know, so we had a lot of testing in that experience working with Zillow. The other big one was Bankrate. You know, they spent about a quarter million dollars with us to wow. build out the lead funnels and landing pages for all of their biggest advertisers. So there's a lot of testing that happened over those multiple years of working with some of these big companies. We packaged it up, turned it into a system for loan officers, real estate agents, uh, insurance agents to basically use that same tech, that same strategy these big billion dollar companies are, are using. There's no, no reason to reinvent the wheel. Hey, thanks for listening to the Taking Back Your Leads podcast. If you like what you hear, subscribe where all major podcasts are available and by visiting leadpops.com.